do secondary sources get hoovered by the narcissist? Well, to address this question, we first need to understand what is a hoover, and then what is a secondary source, before addressing that prominent question. First of all, what is a hoover? Well, the traditional image of a hoover is where a relationship has ended between a narcissist and the victim, and then some time later, the narcissist gets in touch with that victim in order to resurrect the relationship once more. That is, if you like, the traditional view of a hoover, but it is not, by any means, the only way that it occurs. A hoover is a direct assertion of control by a narcissist over another individual. That other individual could be empathic, normal, narcissistic, or even another narcissist. They would be categorized as the victim of the narcissist. There are lots of different types of hoovers. Some hoovers are to seduce somebody, to bring them under control in the golden period. Others are preventative, to stop an appliance, a person, leaving the narcissist. Some are done to resurrect the relationship once again, to perhaps start up a marriage once more, or to go back to being boyfriend and girlfriend. Some hoovers are simply an interaction that doesn't result in the relationship coming back together or resurrecting. The hoover is the first assertion of control, the direct assertion of control, and its chief aim is exactly that. The narcissist, by some means, contacts the victim in order to assert control over them. There are lots of different forms that this can take. It might be that the narcissist goes round to see this person, or rings them up, or sends them a text message, or writes an email, or puts something on social media directed towards them, or wraps a note around a brick and throws it through their window, or sticks a knife in that person's tire. There are lots and lots of different types of hoovers, and they're either benign, so the narcissist does something pleasant, or they're malign, where the narcissist does something unpleasant. But their primary purpose is to assert control over the victim. Invariably, the hoover also seeks the second aspect of the prime aims, fuel. So the narcissist goes around to speak to his ex-girlfriend and pleads, saying that he's ever so sorry for what he's done and please can we try again. It's false contrition, he doesn't actually mean it, but he believes that he does because he's an unaware narcissist. He's doing this to try and assert control over her both in the moment and to resurrect the relationship and to obtain fuel by way of her response. Sometimes the hoover might seek character traits and sometimes a residual benefit. For example, a narcissist gets in touch with a family member under the auspices of asking how they are and then moves on in the conversation to asking for money. They're pleasant and complimentary, which is a benign way of buttering up their family member to control them. The responses of that family member in the telephone conversation provide them with fuel, and they seek the, the residual benefit of asking for money to be lent or given. Accordingly, the chief aim of a hoover is to assert control, but also potentially gain fuel and sometimes character traits and residual benefits. It does not mean that the narcissist wants a relationship to start up again, but sometimes it does. There are different types of hoover in terms of the ways that it's done, and there's also different categorizations. For instance, seductive hoovers, preventative hoovers, the initial grand hoover, follow-up hoovers. If you want to learn more about those, you should read my book, Black Hole. You can find that in the Knowledge Vault or on Amazon. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with the concept of a hoover, it simply means that it's a method of the narcissist getting in touch with a victim for the purposes of controlling them and probably drawing fuel and possibly character traits and residual benefits. What is a secondary source? A secondary source, as explained in my book, Fuel, is a friend, a family member, it could be a lover, 
It could be somebody that you're dating. It could be a colleague. It could be a neighbor. There are intimate partner secondary sources, either intimate partner secondary sources of a shelf variety or dirty little secrets. And then you have non-intimate secondary sources, friends, family, colleagues, neighbors. Amongst the friends, there are inner circle friends and outer circle friends. The purposes of a secondary source is often where it's mid-range or a greater narcissist to support the facade. Largely, secondary sources tend to be treated well by the narcissist because, as mentioned, they form part of the facade, which is important. Furthermore, because the narcissist only interacts with the secondary source on an intermittent basis, they have less opportunity to offend the need for control or for their fuel to become stale. Secondary sources rank between moderate to high importance within the fuel matrix with regard to the potency of their fuel, dependent, for instance, if they're non-intimate or intimate partner secondary sources. Ultimately, however, they do provide an important role in terms of the need to control them, the provision of fuel, and character traits and residual benefits. Having established what hoovers are and what secondary sources are, we then turn to the question, do secondary sources get hoovered by the narcissist? The answer is, yes, they do. The hoovering occurs when that secondary source comes up on the radar of the narcissist and the narcissism determines that the most appropriate way to assert control over them is by way of a hoover. Secondary sources are subjected to the shelving dynamic, which means that in a way they sort of sit in a box on a shelf and the narcissist may not deal with them for days, weeks, months, even years. And then when they do so, they take them off the shelf. The hoover is what takes them off the shelf. So the narcissist gets in touch with that friend. It's been a while, fancy meeting up for a pint. Or contacts a family member. Hey, we're coming through town. Thought we'd hook up. Sometimes they will ring. Sometimes they will just turn up. But the point is, secondary sources will indeed be hoovered by the narcissist. In some instances, a secondary source might be disengaged from, as I've explained in other videos. That is unusual, but it can happen. And then a narcissist can come along to resurrect that relationship that had fallen by the wayside. But more usually, the secondary source is used intermittently, and the period in between hoovers varies dependent upon how often they're coming up on the narcissist's radar and how often the narcissism determines that a hoover would be appropriate. A lot of the time it is, the reason being that secondary sources are less likely to wound compared to, say, a primary source uh, or a former primary source. And therefore, the Hoover execution criteria, the factors that determine whether a narcissist is going to Hoover you or not, often are more favorable than they are compared to primary sources or former intimate partner primary sources. Secondary sources do get Hoovered. It can be done in lots of different ways, and the way that it happens is to hoover them off the shelf for them to be interacted with for an hour on the telephone, a half-hour text exchange, getting together, spending a day or a weekend or even a holiday together, and then no longer doing so by putting them back on the shelf. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.